So what is a respectable dividend yield? Hey guys, welcome back. When looking at dividend paying stocks and ETFs, you'll notice that there is always a yield percentage that is noted. And all that is, is the total of the dividends paid over the course of one full year divided by the current price on that specific day. Therefore, as you can imagine, the yield percentage is constantly changing every day as the price of a stock changes. But what is a respectable dividend yield? What's too high? What's too low? Stick around and we'll chat about it. So before I get too far into this, let me do a quick recap on dividends. Companies that pay a dividend typically do so from the profits that the company has made given the period of time that we're looking at. So generally, if a company pays monthly dividends, it's out of monthly profit. If a company pays quarterly dividends, it's out of quarterly profit. And hopefully, the company has made enough profit in that period of time to pay out that monthly dividend or that quarterly dividend. If they don't, then they either need to pull from the equity of the company, they need to borrow money to keep the dividend maintained, or they need to cut the dividend. All three of those are bad cases for dividend investors and frowned upon in many cases, probably cutting the dividend being the worst. Those that do not invest or don't like to invest in dividend paying companies typically do so because it's a portion of the profits, not all the profits, mind you, but it's a portion of the profit that's going out the door to shareholders when those people that don't believe in dividend paying stocks. They want that money reinvested in the company to grow the business and therefore make their shares more valuable. So what is a yield that's too high and what is a yield that's too low? Well, there's many factors that go into that. Ultimately, it's you that needs to decide if the dividend yield is too high, too low, or just perfect for you. The payout ratio or the amount of dividends that a company pays out out of its profit is a really good indicator as well as to whether or not the dividend will be sustainable. And a good example of a very, very low dividend is Elementation Couchetard, a stock that my wife and I both hold that I've talked about in multiple videos that I've done. And Couchetard's current dividend yield is only around 0.9%, very, very low. However, their payout ratio is only 15%, as I've talked about as well. And if you look behind the scenes, Couchetard is on a major buying spree where they're going out and buying up a number of businesses to bring them in to be their own. And so that dividend yield, although low, can be explained away by the fact that they're on a major expansion of their business. Now, at the same time, Couchetard has also been growing their dividend annually by over 20% for the last 15 years. So given that they're in major growth and expansion mode with a very low dividend, but a high dividend growth rate, the expectation and the hope for us anyway, is that once they are out of this growth mode, that dividend will grow up to a much more respectable percentage, just in time for us to collect dividends when we really want them. On the other end of the scale, if you look at a company like Manulife, Manulife is a company that's been around forever currently at the trading price today, trading at a 5.5% dividend yield. So that's a very respectable quarterly dividend. They've never missed a payment and it's constantly rising as well. And Manulife is not in major expansion or growth mode, even though they are a typically growing company. The one thing you need to keep uh, I guess in the back of your mind, if you look on any website today, as any day, that dividend yield is going to change based on the trading price of that day. And a good example of, of looking um, at a stock as to when you buy it, because the yield on your cost is going to be different than the yield that you see posted on a website. For instance, Manulife trading today is at a 5.5% dividend yield as at the price at close today. But based on my average share price that I bought Manulife at, I'm pushing 6.04% as a dividend yield. <clears throat> Excuse me. So remember, the dividend posted is not necessarily the dividend that you're going to get. It's the dividend if you buy that stock on that day. The dividend percentage that you're getting 
is based on the average cost of all of the shares that you have. And that's simply done by taking all of the total financial amount, the total for one full year of the dividends paid, and dividing that by the average cost per share that you have in your portfolio. Now on the flip side, what is a dividend that's too high? Well, there's a number of ETFs out there and some stocks as well that offer up 10, 12, 14% or greater dividend yields. And I generally stay away from those because usually a dividend yield that is that high comes at a cost somewhere else. And what I've seen in my own experience is the higher the yield, if it's up in the 10, 12, 14% range, usually the capital growth is either stagnant or in some cases can even go down. So while you're getting that monthly payout, which is a great thing, the capital that you put in to buy those shares of the stock or the ETF have lost a little bit of value or at some cases, many cases, is just stagnant and not growing. But each to their own, depending on what your investment style is and what it is that you want to get out of this. That is a good income bearing type setup where the stock is giving you a, a good, decent dividend yield on a monthly or a quarterly basis. My wife and I, we generally look for stocks that are somewhere in the three to five, six, or even 7% range. And that's why it's always interesting to watch stocks and the fluctuation. As I mentioned earlier, your yield on your cost is based on the cost that you purchase at. So every time you buy a stock, or if you buy 10 or 20 of a certain stock once a month for say 12 months, that yield percentage, as I've explained earlier, is going to change over time. So when stocks are on sale or when they drop in value, it's a good time to buy because your yield percentage is going to go up when that stock eventually goes back up. And as I've said, generally stocks and ETFs, they go up and they go down. So that's going to wrap it up for this week. As I always say, this has not been investing advice, just a little bit of information about dividend yield and how to determine it and how to look for ways to maximize that yield and keep that percentage in a respectable range. The, the philosophy or I guess the, the tools that my wife and I look for are a decent yield, but also a good chance at our capital growing, but you do what's best for you. Maybe you want those high yields. Maybe you want all growth. As I always ask at the end of every video, please, if you've enjoyed this video or any video on my site, hit that Arxy's Place icon and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take care and we'll talk to you soon.